Hey guys, this is going to be a throwback video to one of my favorite videos that I've ever done. Definitely the biggest thing that I've ever made using the lost foam casting method. Now because it's a throwback video, my voice in this video is probably going to sound a little bit different than it does today. Only because I'm using a different microphone. If you're interested in seeing how I created the foam pattern, I left that towards the end of the video. The next segment of the video, I'll be showing you how I performed the lost foam casting process prior to melting the metal. In a recent video I did in preparation for this project, I tested this out and this actually works. The reason for this is for me to use less aluminum in making this cast. When finished filling it with sand, add a piece of duct tape to the bottom, wrap it around, and now you can flip it over and add it inside of your container. Now this is the lost foam casting process. I'm going to bury this pattern in dry sand, completely dry sand with zero moisture. You can see by the amount of dust. Now I didn't film the entire filling the bucket with sand. I really didn't want to make this a really long video. So if you'd like to see that, definitely check out some of my other videos because I do include filling the bucket with sand, vibrating it all the way to the top. In today's metal casting video, I'm going to be using the Viver 12kg propane furnace. If you'd like to get one for yourself, head down to the description below and check out my affiliate link. Plus, there's a 5% coupon along with it. So to get this melt started, I'm going to be melting down some aluminum from previous lost foam casts. These were the leftover aluminum that was in the sprue and inside of the container on the top. Now that the furnace is fired up, we're going to let this sit for about 15 minutes and we're going to check on and start adding more scrap aluminum to the furnace. Now in my case, I have a lot of scrap aluminum left over from a greenhouse. I've actually been melting down this aluminum for probably the last two months now. So if you've seen those videos, you've probably seen the same type of aluminum being added to the furnace. I really do like melting this aluminum because it's very easy to put inside of the furnace. It also has minimal slag that I'll need to scrape off at the end. And I will be scraping off some slag, and I believe the slag that I scrape off the top of the crucible is from the parts that I put in the very beginning, the leftover from the last lost foam cast that I've done. With the slag removed from the top of the crucible, it's now time to remove the crucible from the furnace and pour the molten aluminum into my lost foam casting mold. With lost foam casting, you want to make sure you keep that pouring cup on the top 
full of aluminum. Don't stop pouring. Sometimes you're not able to see what you're doing because of the smoke, but you don't want to stop. The pouring cup needs to continuously stay full. So I started to uncover this off film. I was just too excited to see if it actually came out and it really came out so good. So now for the rest of the video, I'm going to play some music, show you the rest of me uncovering it and I'll clean it up for you guys. Well guys, here it is, all cleaned up. All the grime is wire brushed off of it. Now you can see the solid aluminum shine. This thing's pretty hefty, so I'm gonna pull out the scale and we're gonna see what this thing weighs. It's also good for me to keep record just in case I wanna make another one in the future. I'll know how much aluminum I'll need, exactly. 4.77 pounds. So what good is a mace head if you don't have a handle? So this is why I designed it the way I did. So I can thread in a three quarter inch piece of pipe. So I am super happy with this. As I said in the beginning, this is my most favorite project that I've ever done. If you guys would like to make something like this for yourself, stay tuned next for how I made the pattern. So I made the pattern on a piece of thick construction paper. I made this to my best ability to what I thought the mace head looked like. So I have to say this is the easiest part of the video. Cutting out the pattern with a pair of scissors. So for this I'm going to be using half inch thick Owens Corning Foamular NGX. It's polystyrene XPS foam board. I'm going to slice out eight inch by four inch pieces from the full sheet to make it easier to work with. I'm using my hot wire cutter to do that. Next, I'm going to use Elmer's craft glue to temporarily glue that pattern to one of the foam boards. You don't really wanna overdo the glue because after you cut out the first one, you'll be removing that pattern and gluing it to another piece of foam after this one. Shortly after I fastened the pattern to the foam with the Elmer's craft glue, I then brought it over to the hot wire cutter to cut out the shape. Again, you're not really letting the glue set for long. You're just basically putting it on there to get it tacky.
So like I said before, after the first one has been cut out, we're now going to gently remove it from this one and glue it to another piece of foam board that you have next to you. But you saw one fin being cut out, so you don't need to see the rest of them cut out. So what I have here is six fins that we need to fasten to. Wait, I didn't show you what I'm gonna fasten it to because it needs something in the center. I made a 12-sided polygon with a three-quarter inch circle and I aligned them so the circle is in the center. Each side of this polygon is half inch. I then brought the file over to my CNC router and carved out four of these 12-sided polygons. These are all one inch thick. Now that all four of the polygons are cut out, I now need to align them. And for that, I had to go to Home Depot and I had to purchase a three quarter inch steel nipple, four and a half inches long, as well as a three quarter inch coupling. With that three quarter inch nipple, it makes it a lot easier to align it and glue it together and make sure it's straight. The glue I like to use is Aline's Fast Grab Tacky Glue. Glue each one individually, press it together and align it. After a day or two of letting the glue harden up, it's now time to add the fins. Using the same glue, apply the glue and then press the fin on to the center. Do it to each fin. Now this is a process that does take a few days because you really can only do one or two fins at a time. Now like I said in the beginning, this is the first larger foam pattern. And this is the smaller foam pattern that we're gonna be making in today's metal cast. It looks almost like the first one, but it's a little smaller. So in order to get molten metal into the pattern, I need to attach some feeders or sprues. I'm going to attach one of these to each one of the tips of the mace head. Then I'm going to use my small hot wire cutter to make the top sort of flat so I can glue on a large piece of polystyrene EPS. This foam actually burns faster because it's less dense. So it's been a few days and the glue is now solidified. It's now time to coat it with drywall mud. But before I coat it with the drywall mud, I like to spray it down with some soapy water to release the surface tension on the foam. It helps apply the drywall mud much easier. And this isn't just thick drywall mud. This is actually drywall mud that I had watered down. It makes it much easier to apply and you really don't need it all that thick. The reason for the drywall mud is to give it a good surface finish when cast. Make sure to coat the entire piece, let it dry 24 to 48 hours. 